morning, everyone. Lovely to see you all out this morning. It is a beautiful day. And as we gather uh, in worship together here as, as fellowship, we welcome the Holy Spirit amongst us. This is the fourth Sunday after Trinity, and today is a service of morning prayer. Hopefully, you're all able to see uh, an order of service or someone uh, nearby you can share with. Just a few notices uh, before we continue. Bible study uh, this week will be online at 11 a.m. from Wednesday. Again, you're very welcome to join us uh, there. And it will be the last of the Bible overviews, the third part of that as we look at the Bible really in a nutshell. Uh, so do join us uh, for that on Wednesday at 11 uh, onwards online. Uh, next week, uh, the service here in the hall will be led by uh, Reverend Neville Hughes. Uh, I will be away, folks, from the 1st until the 20th of July. Uh, Neville will be taking the service next week and the uh, subsequent week uh, after that. And then Reverend David Coe will be taking the uh, third Sunday in July. If there is an emergency pastoral need, uh, Reverend David Hilliard, the rector of Tartarahan, will be looking after uh, those needs within the parish during uh, the, the, those days between the 1st and the 20th of July. Also, uh, just to let you know, uh, feel free uh, as you leave church this morning, there are little slips of paper uh, on the table just out in the porch here. We are hoping to have a service at the very end of August. It seems a long way off yet, but you'll see the reason why I'm announcing it today. Uh, it's going to be your favorite hymn Sunday or your favorite Christian song Sunday. So I want you to start to think about what you, uh, or what your personal song or hymn might be that you really, really love, and would love to hear sung and played by the group. <laughs> Yours truly here uh, on stage. It's the very last Sunday in August. Little slips of paper outside uh, on the table. As you go out, uh, feel free to write down the name of that hymn or song on that, and one of the wardens will pop it into the box to be kept until that date. I would prefer if you could write with your own pen or pencil, folks, uh, rather than using a common pen or pencil outside, just for COVID uh, restriction. Don't worry if you haven't anything to write with today. This will be constantly repeated every Sunday uh, right up to the end of August. So you have loads of time uh, to write down your favorite hymn or song on the little sheet of paper on any of the Sundays between now and the end of August. And the hymn or songs that will be most common or most popular, in other words, most numerous, uh, will be the ones that will be sung uh, on the day. So uh, do uh, feel free to avail of that uh, in the weeks to come. Thank you. Over to Stuart. Thank you, Reverend Jeffrey. The Lord be with you. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. So now we come to a time of confession. Let us confess our sins to God our Father, as we say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will sing your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us stand now to sing that lovely hymn, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. If anyone feels that they can't stand or is more comfortable sitting, please feel free to sit. praising God and we say together in alternate half verse Psalm 130 Out of the depths have I cried to you O Lord Lord hear my voice Make your ears consider my voice of If you Lord were to mark what is done amiss O Lord keep it stand. But there is forgiveness with you so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul my soul waits for the Lord more than the night watch for the morning. More than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all our sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be. Please be seated while Keith brings our reading to us. A 
reading from Mark 5, verses 21 to 43. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered round him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She endured much more, much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all round to see who had done it. But the woman knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you mix a commotion and weep? The child is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with them and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, come, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. Here ends the reading. Thanks very much indeed, Keith. You see, by the length of that reading, he drew the short straw today. Thanks very much and well read. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we just look at your reading now, uh, particularly in these moments as we address the children and our young people, and indeed all of us, and we can learn so much together. So we ask you to bless us now in these moments and that we hear your voice. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, folks, I've brought a little chair uh, to the front of the stage here. I want to have a seat for the children's talk today. Now, some of you might say, yeah, he's getting on a wee bit. Suppose he needs to sit down once in a while during the service. But you'll find out why I'm sitting in a moment or two. There is a reason for that. First of all, uh, all the children, uh, young people, indeed adults, I want you to think for a moment about what you would describe as absolutely horrible, something uh, that you may not like to eat in any way. You go, yuck, too. Absolutely disgusting. I wouldn't eat it no matter what you would say or do or even give me uh, to do that. So I want you to think of something that is in the sense of, yuck, I definitely would not want to partake of that. I'm sure something's coming to mind for most of us in church this morning. Or maybe it's not something that you eat. It could be something else that you would simply say, yuck to. I don't want anything to do with that. It could be a smell. It could be something that you uh, see. and it's, I don't want to see it again or smell that again or taste that again. Now, in my bag, I have a little something. 
Okay. Now, how many put out seed and peanuts for the birds, the wild birds in their gardens? Who does that? Okay. <laughs> yes, I think there is a few hands up and a few yeses there. So it's lovely to see them in the gardens at this time of year as they start to nest and all of that. Now, you may have seen something called a fat ball. Does anybody know what a fat ball is? It's given to the birds. It's like a, it's like a sort of a, I suppose, a real mixture of seed and suet and all sticky type stuff and it comes in a round ball and you can hang it up in the garden and the birds absolutely love it. Well in my little bag I've got a little bit of fat ball. Okay, nice and gooey. This one's all sort of half melted. Now, my uh, diet as you know, folks who have done this before as well, are strange at times. Anybody up for me having a taste of this? Now it's your time to get your own back on me. <laughs> okay, let's have a wee go at this. Who's up for it? Hmm. Don't worry, I'm not spreading any feathers <laughs> or cheeping. That's not bad. Not bad at all. But I'm going to let you into a little secret. You may be all going, yuck, but he's mad anyway. He's probably something he would eat. It's actually not a fat ball at all. It's porridge. A little bit of cool porridge. <laughs> it looks very similar, isn't it? When you actually cook the stuff, it does look a bit like a fat ball. But I can imagine you all going, yuck, why did he do that? The other thing, this is the reason why I'm sitting this morning. I am going to take my shoes off, everybody. Okay. Now, you don't know if I haven't changed my socks in a week, do you? Who thinks I don't change my socks every day? Anybody? <laughs> Jacob! <laughs> so you're really ready for this, Jacob, eh? I'm going to take my shoes off. Now, everybody's wearing masks in church. You should have been given nose pegs as well before you came through the door. And taking your shoes off is a bit like traffic lights. Okay, now how I'm going to describe that is this, okay. Once I take the shoes off, okay, at the minute we're uh, in green, okay, everything's flowing nicely, you're not smelling anything strange coming from the stage, but now we're going to go into a state of amber, okay. So, I'm going to take the shoes off. I remembered I was going to put on a pair of socks on this morning that were two different colours, but I remembered to change them again because you'd all be seeing them very different. So there we are, nice green socks, Anybody smelling yet? No? <laughs> it's very hard behind the masks, I know, but hopefully it's getting out there, you know. So, so we're in an amber stage at the moment. We're starting to get, oh, getting a wee bit yucky, this. Now, what if I take the socks off? Who's up for that? Think so, Jacob? Yeah, take the socks off. Okay, why not? This is when it gets to this stage of red. So, have the sock off there. And the sock off there. <laughs> There's a voice came from behind me there, and it was a real yuck. Now I'll waft them around a wee bit, particularly my own family sitting here in the front rows, probably getting a wee bit of that, guys, and out this way a bit. I do wash my feet daily, everybody, okay, but that's not to say as the day goes on, some people have very sweaty feet. I'm sure maybe you have members of the family who are like that. You never ever want to see them like this in front of you. So it's a real state of yuck. Okay, so we obviously had a green light with the shoes. That's fine. Everybody's wearing shoes. It doesn't bother you. Amber, getting a little more worried. The smell might get out with the socks. And obviously when you take the socks off, yuck, completely bare feet. What I'm going to try and get across everybody this morning is this. From our reading, we've seen a lot of uncleanness. Okay, there's two people, and we're going to look at them a little uh, more in depth in the sermon in a moment. We had a lady who had an issue of blood, a hemorrhage, and she suffered with it for a long time. And we had Jairus' daughter who had died. Now, in no way, in normal Jewish circumstances at the time, was Jesus to touch this lady. Jewish men did not touch other women to start with, and she also had an issue of blood which was seen as unclean in Moses' law. He was not to touch her at all. And Jairus' daughter had died. You do not go near a dead person. You certainly don't touch them. 
in Jewish uh, custom. But what did Jesus do? He touched both. Yes, the lady came up behind him and touched his cloak, but he still let the power go out of him to heal her. And he'd no bother going to Jairus' daughter and raise her from the dead. He took her by the hand. He touched her and brought her up. That is seen as unclean. Definitely never would anybody do it. So it's a real yuck in those days. But Jesus had no problem with that. And the big thing in our lives, folks, until we come to Christ, we are unclean before God. We're unclean in our sins. Now, it doesn't make us perfect when we come to Christ. We still let him down. And when that uncleanness attacks us by sin, we can come to the Lord and he will wash them away. But before we come to him, we are still dead in sin. We are still unclean before the Lord. But you know what? There's not a sin that he won't take away. If you're thinking today, there's things I've done in my life that Jesus would not be proud of. Jesus wouldn't want me. The things I've thought, said, and done. But believe it or not, he does want you. And he wants to clean you. And by his blood on the cross, he does that. But we must want that. And he will not turn us away ever. He never says yuck to any one of us, no matter what we've done. And because of his blood, because of his death, we are made whole, we're forgiven, and we are made clean. So folks, we'll have a wee prayer before we move on in the service. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you're a God who in no way turns anyone away from your love. You love us all. And Father, there may be things in our lives that we've done, said, and thought that are terrible, and we think that you would never forgive us. But Lord, your word teaches us that you certainly do. You don't turn anyone away. As long as we come and ask for that forgiveness by your blood on the cross, you make us whole. You make us new. So, Father, be with us in that now. And if we've never come to you, that we can do that today, knowing that we can have new life, forgiven, and continue to be loved by you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, Stuart. I'll let Stuart announce the next bit, folks, when I get this um, covered up. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Jeffrey. And well, he gets dressed again. Uh, we're now going to sing a new song. Um, anyone who has access to Facebook will have seen a link to it, and perhaps you've looked it up. Um, if not, if you were in earlier, before the service, you will have heard our praise group uh, going over it and practicing it. And we now stand to sing this new song, The Goodness of God.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you uh, for your goodness, and Lord, the goodness of your word that teaches us who you are and what you've done for us. And Lord, now as we meet around your word, that you will speak to us afresh, that our hearts and minds are open to receive you and draw closer to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm not sure if many in church this morning are fans of detective series on TV or a detective film of some kind, but you may find if you watch these things that after a crime has been done in a house or a building or whatever, you find that forensics are in and they use this stuff called luminol, and luminol gives traces of blood stain. Uh, after a crime, even though the criminal has washed the place immaculately and leaves no trace, or so he or she thinks, luminol will show up traces of blood stain if it was present on any surface. In other words, you cannot fully clean uh, the crime scene. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And do note the word all. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us that are born into this world, regardless of who we are, our background, our color, class, or creed, we're born into a sinful world. And before we even commit a wrongdoing of our own, we are tainted with sin. And so we are unclean, spiritually speaking. No matter how good we are or how good a life we live, live, how much church we do, how much giving of ourselves, our resources, our time, our energies, they are not what makes us clean before God. So how do we get out of this uncleanness that we're born into in this world? Well, God, through Christ, can cleanse all. There is good news that we can be made whole, that we can be cleansed from all wrong. 
any word, deed, or thought. As we're sharing in the children's talk, anything can be cleansed by God. None of us are too far down the line not to be accepted by him. And the two people that we're looking at in the text today from Mark 5 that Keith read to us, the two main protagonists of the story, the lady with the hemorrhage and Jairus' daughter, they show us by their story that nothing can keep us from God's grace, his cleansing, his healing, and his salvation. So first of all, Jairus, and we see him in verse 22. Feel free uh, to follow the scripture. It is in the order of service if you'd like to. And we see a little bit about this man. He's first mentioned here in verse 22. He's a leader of the synagogue. His name is there. It's Jairus. He comes, and when he sees Jesus, he falls at his feet and begs him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. I think Jairus is desperate. He's a man in desperation. He's begging Jesus as little daughter can be healed. Now, let's look at Jairus. This guy is a leader of the synagogue. And many in the synagogue were adverse to Jesus. He's seen as a reprobate, a renegade. Why would anybody follow him? He's not obeying the teaching that the Jews followed, the Mosaic teaching. And Jairus throws all social inhibitions off. He forgets almost his culture, his background, his role in the synagogue. He falls at Jesus' feet and begs him. You can imagine him clinging to his feet begging Jesus. He's in desperation. He needs Jesus, even though his peers and those around him may say that this guy needs thrown out as a leader of the synagogue. And we've seen that time and time again in the Gospels with others. The man is desperate, regardless of his tradition, position in society. He needs Jesus, and he knows Jesus can heal and cleanse. Now, some might say as they read on in this particular gospel that Jairus' daughter doesn't really die because they read into Jesus' response later on, she's just sleeping. But Jesus means something else by that. She is definitely dead. There's a miracle about to happen. If you look at verse 35, while Jesus is still speaking, some people come from the leader's house and say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? And later on, we see people making a commotion. They're wailing and weeping over the girl's death. That wouldn't have happened unless she was really dead. And there were professional mourners in those days employed to wail outside the home of a dead person. She is dead. And Jesus is coming to heal her. He touches death. It's unclean. Nobody does it in Jewish culture. When someone dies, that's it. No one touches the body. Verse 41 and 42, he takes her by the hand and says to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately she gets up and begins to walk about. He touches death. He touches uncleanness and restores her. It's taboo, but he does it. Even those of us who are dead in sin today, Jesus can cleanse, forgive, and restore, and give salvation, which is the greatest healing of all, the salvation of our souls. And it's a healing we can have now from our unclean beings. God can give us salvation, the greatest healing of all. In this life, we may not be healed of certain physical or psychological conditions. We may carry them all our days, and we don't know the reason for that. But salvation we can have now when we come to Christ, the greatest healing of all. No one is too far gone. No one is too unclean to come to Christ. 
When my son Thomas was very, very small, he doesn't know I'm going to talk about him this morning, we were in Skegness some years ago on the east coast of England. And it's a, it's a big uh, seaside resort, really, and there was a fun fair there at that time. And there were literally thousands of people gathered uh, at this fun fair. It was shoulder to shoulder stuff. You know, one of those uh, events where you're pushing through people and you really can't see beyond the person in front of you. I'm sure you've been there, whatever the event may have been. And I was holding on to Thomas's hand. He was about three, maybe, something like that at the time. And just in that, that particular moment, I lost grip with him and lost him. And Christine was with me too, with Sarah, and we were all together, the three of us. But Thomas had drifted into the crowd somewhere. And you know the panic that might set in, the fear, the worry, if you have a child that has happened to but we were very blessed because a very trusting couple came back with them hand in hand. They seen the worry and the stress in our faces. They must have connected that we were his parents. And he came back. Thankfully, it was only minutes. It's a bit like the story here now with our second person, the lady with the hemorrhage. There's a big crowd following Jesus. You see there, they're pressing in on him. Jesus is shoulder to shoulder here with others. There are thousands following him because of what he's been doing. Verse 24, a large crowd follows him, presses in on him. Again, verse 31, the disciples are saying, you see the crowd pressing in on you and you're asking, who touched me in the middle of all this? How can you tell in the midst of all these people that someone touched you? But Jesus touches the unclean. This lady has an issue of blood. She's an outcast as regards society a hemorrhage. She's told by Moses' law she shouldn't even be out in society until that passes. But she's had 12 years of this and probably has been inside for most of that time. Not only is she a lady and Jewish men do not touch ladies they don't know, but she also has this hemorrhage. Well, it's no problem to Jesus. He touches her. But she reaches out first. If I can only touch his robes, his cloak, I shall be healed. Great faith. We see it in verse 28 and verse 29. If I but touch him, I will be well. And her hemorrhage stops immediately. She feels in her body that she is healed of her disease. Jesus never casts away anyone that is looking for healing, for cleansing, and for the gift of salvation, the greatest healing of all. And he wants to know us. You see, he turns around and asks, who touched me? He knows power has gone out of his body. And he could have said, oh, well, someone's been healed, that's that. I don't really care to meet them. But he wants to know them. Who touched me? And he looks around to see who had done it. And the lady comes back. And she's down on her knees in fear and trembling. Probably worrying about society around her. People that knew she had this hemorrhage. And probably in fear of Jesus herself. But she tells him the whole truth. And there's more to that. It's not simply about her hemorrhage. It's about her life. And how she needs cleansed by the Lord not only of her physical uncleanness, but her spiritual uncleanness. Our relationship with Jesus involves us giving everything over to him, all of our lives. Tell him the whole truth. Not that he doesn't know it already, but he wants to hear it in our lives. And note, Jesus physically touches her and Jairus' daughter. No one is too unclean to come to him. By his Holy Spirit, he must come into our lives to clean us of our sins, to know his salvation, the greatest healing of all. We can't mess about with him. It's all or nothing. To give our whole lives to him, to recognize our sins, our wrongdoings, the uncleanness in our lives, and that he can heal us and cast no one away.
Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that you're a God of love and unconditional love who never gives up on his people, his children. And Father, we've seen through Jairus' daughter and the lady with the hemorrhage who both, Father, unfortunately were seen as unclean by their society with what was happening to them. But you had no problem touching them and healing them physically and restoring them, but also for the sense of uncleanness, Lord, that is sin in our lives, that you can take it away, that you in no wise cast anyone out. Help us to come to you, Lord, whatever today is on our hearts and minds that we feel that maybe you will not forgive but that you can and that you will because of the cross and that we can be restored and have new life in you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We now have an opportunity to affirm our personal faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, as we note the words, I believe, let us stand and say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and grant her government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and lead us the collect of this, the fourth Sunday after Trinity. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Amen. And let us join together in saying the two morning collects printed in the service sheet. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, o Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. 
Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we continue in prayer, let us continue to thank Almighty God for all his blessings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for health and strength to come together this morning and for all your many blessings, even through these difficult days. For all your blessings in creation, for the beauty of the earth and the sea and the sky, for your manifold works and for the wisdom wherewith you have made them all, we thank you, O God. We thank you for those who have chosen to serve you in the ministry of your church and for giving them a perfect example in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask your blessing on all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially John, our Archbishop, Geoffrey, our Rector, and also Timothy, who is presently in training for the ministry. May your blessing also be upon those who will cover for our Rector while he takes a well-earned break from his duties. And may he and his family be refreshed and stay safe until he resumes again. Let all who serve never forget the privilege of their calling, nor shrink its responsibilities. Keep them in your love, that they may be good shepherds of your people and true servants of him who is our great high priest, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for the parish at this time, for those who are unable to be with us at church this morning, for those who are perhaps feeling lonely, for those families who find it difficult to readjust after bereavement. Give them comfort, assurance, and peace, and enable us to be supportive to them. We pray for those who are in suffering, in sickness or distress, together with their loved ones. Help them to experience your power, that they may seek strength from you and find peace and healing in your presence. And this morning, we think especially of those in care homes and especially those presently in hospital. And we pray for all those who are undergoing treatment or awaiting tests or appointments. Thank you for those who are recovering and for the skill and care of all health professionals emergency, administration, and support workers. Bless all our children and young people as they prepare for the summer break from school and university, and those now seeking employment at the end of full-time education, as they face the future and all that it holds for them. Give them the confidence that their times are in your hands. Help them to discover your purpose for their lives that they may find their true fulfillment in your service. And we pray, O God, for your servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and all the royal family, for all in authority under her in Parliament and in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Guide those who rule over us and help them to govern in your faith and fear, and enable them to so order our national life that selfishness and injustice may be defeated and all may strive together for the common good, to the praise and honour of your name, both at home and throughout the world. And now we take a few moments' silence to bring our prayers, our own personal prayers, to God our Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we prepare to go out as God's people, we conclude our prayers with the words of the grace. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. We now stand for our closing hymn, hymn number 489 in our hymn books. A favourite of many, lovely old hymn, Tell Me the Old, Old Story.
Please be seated. Let's pray together. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Good to see you all. Do have a good week. God bless.